So right next to me, there's a, there's a boat. It ran, it ran aground here. And it's been here for a couple weeks, and they're just beginning to work on, on getting it out now. But that boat was, it didn't come ashore in shallow water. It came ashore in water that was, that was high enough to hold its draft. Coast Guard's working on it now, salvage divers are working on it now, they're trying to get it out. Across the island and up on the other end of the island, same thing's happening. Salvage divers, uh, disaster relief people are, are here to help the people in New York, but uh, Staten Island can't do it alone. Staten Island, uh, the people here can't do it alone. So many of our clients, um, all of our clients really are, you know, marginalized and isolated. Um, victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, other crimes, they're, um, they're so vulnerable. And now with a storm um, and with the, the devastating effects that people have experienced and will continue to experience on Staten Island, we need more support than ever. There are a lot of kids, uh, particularly the type of children that we see, abused children who don't have services here, who can't get services. There are um, victims of domestic violence who, who, who definitely can't get service because the police are tied up in rescue and recovery operations. So today, if you dial 911, I'm sure you're going you're to have a long wait. I had uh, one client who came to me a couple of days before the storm, and she's been stalked for a couple of months now, and we were helping her advocate with the police department um, as well as the DA's office. Um, and then when the storm happened, everything kind of came to a stop. The precinct that she lives in is is the 123 precinct, which is an area of Staten Island that had the most impact um, and destruction. And so the resources now, you know, although they were slim before, now there's really barely any resources to help her. And it's really been, um, it's been terrifying. Safety planning is really difficult because people, um, their basic needs have been ripped away from them and we're helping people get back their basic needs, you know, and stay safe from the violence that might be going on in their home even before the storm. Now that shelters, which were slim before, um, are kind of not even an option anymore because of so many people who are displaced because of the storm. So our shelters become even more important now. Where does somebody, where does a victim of domestic violence go when their home is that one, or the temporary home they were at is down? They have to come to one of our shelters. So we, we need help. Safe Horizon needs help. We need help to keep those shelters open. We need help to keep those people safe. We know from our experience that um, hurricanes can be devastating to communities. We have had clients who have come here from other parts of the country after natural disasters, such as Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. These natural disasters put people out even more so than they already are experiencing. Um, our clients we have seen become homeless because their families cannot afford to pay the rent. If a hurricane comes and destroys their family's home, they have nowhere to go. And oftentimes the family does all that they can to take care of themselves. And young adults are the first to go out on the streets because they are seen as being capable. And oftentimes there's no safety net for these clients. Many of the young people told us stories about really having to hover for shelter, you know, under certain abandoned buildings and you know, cuddle up with all the folks that were probably in very unsafe conditions. Many young people went to their families who turned them away. Um, so, you know, our, the most vulnerable people in our city, which is homeless youth at that time, were really left with a lot of, a lot of resources. When we opened back up, we had a big influx of young people who came in and, uh, um, you know, some didn't have shower for a few days, didn't really have a meal for a few days that we were closed. On the Lower East Side, the drop-in center was um, without light because of the power outage, but our outreach team and the staff quickly pulled together, got some sandwiches, supplies like socks, underwear, um, and anything that young person could have for basic needs. They went to the different areas that young people hung out and we're able to give them those supplies. Here at the overnight, we were really lucky that we never lost power. Unfortunately, there were a lot of New Yorkers who did lose power. Um, 
And this is something that a lot of our young people who live on the street deal with every single day. Um, they never get a hot meal. They never get a hot shower. They never have a light to read by at nighttime. And, and so these clients had exaggerated impact by the hurricane because they didn't have any safety net. They didn't have any place to go. They were still on the streets. Um, and, and so Street Work Project has worked tirelessly to, to provide as much as we can for these clients doing outreach, um, providing as much food as we can to these clients who often seek services that are now inundated by other New Yorkers who are also now seeking services. And so our work has become even more important. We need resources to do this. We can come into it with our hearts and our goodwill and our compassion and our empathy. But at the end of the day, we need that support. And sometimes when you have to tell a young person, gosh, I don't have that bed that you need, so you can come out the cold, so we can help you get to this other move, or God, I have to close the door at five o'clock. You know, many young people commented that what would be so helpful is if they had like a 24 hour facility that they could have access to those resources because if not for us, you know, that's all they had in the city.